Hey guys, it's Vinny Lambo here, and today I have a little bit of a different video for you. In front of me is this $50 a year school issued laptop. It's called the Dell Latitude 3180. Yeah, I haven't heard of it either. But today, I'm going to go in depth and see if it's really an okay laptop or if it should really be only used for Microsoft Word. Just a note before the video starts, the blue sticky note in the corner on the top of the laptop is covering my full name and school that I go to. All the school issued laptops have their own identification sticker on them, so I just wanted to let you guys know. So with this laptop coming from a very business oriented company, I'm not expecting that great of specs on this laptop, especially since it's from school. This laptop comes with an Intel Pentium N4200 and it's clocked at 1.1 GHz. However, it usually runs around double that when I open up a Chrome tab. It also has 8GB of DDR3 RAM that's clocked to 1800 MHz. So I mean, it's not that terrible for what it's worth, and I'm actually quite impressed since the Dell website lists a maximum of 4GB. So you know, I guess the school did some upgrading. On the storage side of things, this laptop contains a Lit-Eon, Light-On, lit -eon. the I don't know I've never heard of this company, 128GB SSD. And of course, for the GPU, it's the good old Intel HD graphics. I'm happy to see that this actually has 4GB of shared memory, so that's pretty cool. But it's Intel graphics, so it's not cool. Visually is where the laptop suffers. It features an 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 LCD display. Having the RGB color format and being 60Hz, you wouldn't think that it's that terrible, but being paired with horrible viewing angles and a ton of backlight bleed, the display does not provide for a promising viewing experience. When you're looking at pictures straight on at max brightness, or you're looking at a very slow paced video, it could be a lot worse, but as soon as you get into a lot of action or a very detailed colorful picture, all the colors get washed away and the whole feel of the display just feels very cheap. Speaking of cheap, let's talk about build quality. This entire laptop is made entirely of plastic. The bezels are huge, and the screen has a ton of flex. The chassis also has a good amount of flex, especially for being almost an inch thick. Coming in at 0.82 inches and weighing around 2.79 pounds, this piece of plastic is not cutting edge. One pro of this design though is the curved edges around the chassis. There is no way that you can make your wrists feel uncomfortable while typing due to the nice curved edges and also a nice rubber ring around the chassis as well. On the contrary, this rubber ring also makes the laptop look not very appealing. As for the keyboard and trackpad, they are terrible. The keyboard feels very mushy and the laptop is not ideal, especially with the arrow keys being half the height of a normal key. The trackpad is probably the worst one I've ever used. It is very mushy and there is no actual click response for when you press on the trackpad. There's a ton of flex in it and there's no actual way to tell if you've clicked on something unless you see the screen change. Now it may seem like I'm being very harsh on this laptop, but it's all for a reason. This laptop ain't cheap. Through the school, I'm paying 50 bucks per year for this laptop, and coming with a full free replacement plan and warranty, this deal is really not that terrible. But if you want to buy one for yourself and actually own it, Dell's website advertises this thing at $400. Not just that, but it does not even come with 8GB of RAM, it actually comes maxed out with 4. Plus, the 400 variant is the base model. I'm reviewing the maxed out model, so I would assume an even higher price than $400. At this day and age, there are so many better deals, and paying for this piece of garbage for $400 or $500 is ridiculous when you can just go online to eBay and get a used, better spec laptop, or even just wait for a deal to get an actually decent laptop with something better than an Intel Trashium for probably under $500. Bucks. This laptop comes with a decent amount of ports, like a mic slash headphone jack combo, an AC power plug, a micro SD card reader, a full size HDMI port, and two 3.1 Gen 1 USB Type A ports. Like what I said before, this laptop comes with an Intel graphics, which is not really a GPU. But that pretty much means you can't play anything. 
Most games now are not even compatible, and because of the contract I signed with my school, I can't even play any games on it. However, there are some games I can play through the web. Snake is a very demanding game, and it runs great, and I'm really surprised. It averages around 60 frames per second, which is ideal considering the specs on this machine. The verdict is that this laptop is meh. The specs aren't great, the screen isn't great, the keyboard and trackpad aren't great, but I mean, it's a great form factor, and it does feel good in the hand. It's also very portable. Being fanless, it would be great in a college or business type scenario. Don't expect to be playing games or watching full HD videos on it, but if you're just looking to type out a Microsoft Word document or make your kid's first computer, this laptop should be alright for you. Well, that seems to be the end of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this laptop review. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe, and make sure to share with your friends if they're looking for a business or college type laptop. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.